Okay. Hello, 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 hello everyone. Good morning. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good evening. Good evening. Depending on where you're watching us from. How are you? How was your day? Could you please drop comments in the comments box so we can see who has joined? And then please touch the buttons more. And if you can hear us loud and clear, just leave seven. If you can see us, if you can see us, and you can hear, you can us, hear us, drop seven in the comment box. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you can hear us, and if you can see us, please drop seven in the chat box. So, today <laughs> is another moye. <laughs> Come for Bella, I see you. How was your day? Today yeah, is another moye. Yes, I think we're waiting for them. Let's just... Yes. A video clip yes. on leadership. So Levels of an we're organization. Leadership. Leadership who are not leaders. leaders. So watch this clip. We do as they tell us. Leadership is perhaps one of the most misunderstood subjects in business. Leadership has nothing to do with rank. I know many people who sit at the highest levels of an organization who are not leaders. We do as they tell us because they have authority over us, but we do not trust them and we do not follow them. I also know people at low levels of organizations that have no formal authority, but they've made a choice. The choice to look after the person to the left of them, the choice to look after the person to the right of them, and we would trust them and follow them anywhere. Leadership is the awesome responsibility to see those around us rise. You, every one of us, can choose to be the leader we wish we had. We lead our teams and we can lead our clients when we decide that we will do everything in our power to see them rise, to see them achieve their ambitions and their dreams. And this is what servant leadership means. I serve your dream rather than you serve my bottom line. And it's totally fine to have financial goals. It's totally fine to have metrics because that becomes the proof of value that somebody wants to give you their money because they believe in you. It is, it is proof positive. But uh, uh, the best leaders I know are students of leadership. There's no such thing as an expert leader. It doesn't exist. Like there's no such thing as an expert parent. It doesn't exist, right? We are students of leadership, and even the most senior leaders constantly are reading books, reading articles, watching talks, having conversations all the time about leadership. They're always in learning mode. And I think for anyone who wants to be a leader, uh, you have to choose to be a student of the subject, like anything. If you want to be good at something, you have to study it. And the most ignored characteristic of leadership you know, we talk about vision and charisma. Yes, these are important. But I've known some wonderful leaders who don't have huge world-changing vision. 
I've known some wonderful leaders that are quiet and sit in the corner, but they all have courage. The courage to advance a vision, the courage to ignore the short-term ups and downs of the business, the courage to take risks on people, the courage to believe in people, the courage to speak truth to power, the courage to do the right thing and have integrity. I think courage is a very undervalued characteristic of leadership. Hmm. Okay, we hope you learned something from that. You know, still talking about leadership, we have another video clip. Mm -hmm. Thinkers and authorities for an almost endless variety of topics. Under the slogan, Ideas Worth Spreading, TED Talks has remained the number one source for talks by leaders, thinkers, and authorities for an almost endless variety of topics. Here are excerpts from my top five must-watch TED Talks to advance your leadership and accelerate your people management. Some you may have seen, but I'm sure there's some you haven't. Number one, How Great Leaders Inspire Action by Simon Sinek. This really launched Simon's career and he has not slowed down since. The focus is on inspiring through purpose. Why, how, what? This little idea explains why some organizations and some leaders are able to inspire where others aren't. Let me define the terms really quickly. Every single person, every single organization on the planet knows what they do 100%. Some know how they do it, whether you call it your differentiating value proposition or your proprietary process or your USP, but very, very few people or organizations know why they do what they do. And by why, I don't mean to make a profit. That's a result. It's always a result. By why, I mean what's your purpose, what's your cause, what's your belief? Why does your organization exist? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? And why should anyone care? Well, as a result, the way we think, the way we act, the way we communicate is from the outside in. It's obvious. We go from the clearest thing to the fuzziest thing. But the inspired leaders and the inspire or inspired organizations, regardless of their size, regardless of their industry, all think, act, and communicate from the inside out. Let me give you an example. I use Apple because they're easy to understand and everybody gets it. If Apple were like everyone else, yes. A marketing message from them might sound like this. We make great computers. They're beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. Want to buy one? Meh. And that's how most of us communicate. That's how most marketing is done, that's how most sales is done, and that's how most of us communicate interpersonally. We say what we do, we say how we're different or how we're better, and we expect some sort of behavior, a purchase, a vote, something like that. Here's our new law firm. Uh, we have the best lawyers with the biggest clients. We, have, you know, we always perform for our clients, do business with us. Here's our new car. It gets great gas mileage. It has you know, leather seats. Buy our car. But it's uninspiring. Here's how Apple actually communicates. Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. The way we challenge the status quo is by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. We just happen to make great computers. Want to buy one? Totally different, right? You're ready to buy a computer from me. All I did was reverse the order of the information. What it proves to us is that people don't buy what you do, people buy why you do it. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. This explains why every single person in this room is perfectly comfortable buying a computer from Apple. But we're also perfectly comfortable buying an MP3 player from Apple, or a phone from Apple, or a DVR from Apple. But as I said before, Apple's just a computer company. There's nothing that distinguishes them structurally from any of their competitors. Their competitors are all equally qualified to make all of these products. In fact, they tried. A few years ago, Gateway came out with flat screen TVs. They're eminently qualified to make flat screen TVs. They've been making flat screen monitors for years. Nobody bought one. And Dell. Dell came out with MP3 players and PDAs. And they make great quality products, and they can make perfectly well-designed products, and nobody bought one. In fact, talking about it now, we can't even imagine buying an MP3 player from Dell. Why would you buy an MP3 player from a computer company? But we do it every day. 
People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Number two, Stop Managing, Start Leading by Hamza Khan. Hamza explores the differences in managing and leading. I will say this is still a hot topic and for me, I think you need both leadership and management, but this video excellently explains some of the differences to consider. The old command and control mindset is not going to work anymore. The existing model doesn't make any sense. It does not make sense for creative agencies. It does not make sense for startups. It does not make sense for think tanks. It does not make sense for publications. It does not make sense for anywhere where the next generation is trying to do creative work, entrepreneurial work, or information-based work. And so why are we doing this? Well, because of tradition. And tradition is easy. Tradition is comforting. Tradition is ultimately limiting. It stifles innovation. It's doing things because that's the way it's always been done. But let me tell you, Doing things because that's the way it's always been done is a horrible, horrible reason to continue doing anything. And so it behooves managers of the next generation to develop a focus on management with a distinctly theory why approach. In order to understand and appreciate theory why, you first have to understand and appreciate theory X. Theory X assumes a lot of things. It assumes that employees are lazy, that they avoid work and that they actually dislike work. It's kind of like when your parents assigned you tasks or chores when you were younger, do the lawn, do the dishes, and you'd rather be doing other things. Theory Y assumes the complete opposite. Theory Y assumes that employees are ambitious, that they're self-motivated, that they exercise self-control, and that they actually enjoy their physical and mental duties. And that given the proper conditions, an employer operating within the Theory Y framework can actually help their employees achieve the most elusive part of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that little point at the top of the triangle, self-actualization. But that's all given the proper conditions. So what do those proper conditions look like? Well, let me tell you about how I run my ships. I start from a place of 100% trust. I provide my teams with their areas of responsibility. They have their goals. They have their deadlines. And I assume that they're here for the right reason and that they want to work and that they will do good work. I provide them with space, physical and otherwise. Now, we have an office, yes. You're not physically expected to be there. You can work from the office, you can work from home, you can be in Bermuda with your shorts on for all I care. As long as work is getting done on time and to a high degree of quality, why is there any need for me to actually track your hours? It's dehumanizing, it's degrading. And I believe in co-creation. I believe in building things together. I simply am not going to assign you something and expect you to do it, let alone do a good job. I'd rather invest you emotionally in the process of producing whatever it is that we're producing. And then I believe in leadership. This is something I've resisted for a long time. But my teams have told me time and again, Hamza, we need somebody to be there who's a steward, who's gonna guide us, who's gonna provide us with insulation from the more harsh realities of the organization and the industry, frankly. And I believe in culture. I believe that people wanna show up to a workplace that doesn't feel like a workplace, that feels more like a community, where they can be among friends, where they can bring their whole selves to work, something I've really learned and appreciated with my time at Ryerson SA. And I believe that we should create a work that is conducive, create a workplace that is conducive to doing excellent work. And when all of these proper conditions are met, what happens? We do work that we're proud of. We're more creative. We discover meaning and fulfillment. We strike work-life blend, and I would hope that we ultimately achieve happiness. I'm optimistic about the next generation because not only can we break the cycle, I believe we will break the cycle of doing things the way they've always been done. And it's gonna come from understanding a fundamental difference between outcomes and outputs. And this quote in particular reminds me of this. It underscores this idea so well. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry said, if you wanna build a ship, don't drum up people to collect wood and don't assign them tasks and work but rather teach them to long for the endless immensity of the sea. Number three, how to get better at things you care about by Eduardo Bresino. Eduardo explores the importance of deliberate practice and using practice spaces rather than performance zones to learn and grow. Understanding this is key to helping your staff and yourself develop. When Beyonce is on tour, during the concert, she's in her performance zone. But every night when she gets back to the hotel room, she goes right back into her learning zone. She watches a video of the show that just ended. She identifies opportunities for improvement for herself, her dancers, and her camera staff. And the next morning, everyone receives pages of notes with what to adjust, which they then work on during the day before the next performance. <coughs> it's a spiral to ever-increasing capabilities, but we need to know when we seek to learn and when we seek to perform. 
And while we want to spend time doing both, the more time we spend in the learning zone, the more we'll improve. So how can we spend more time in the learning zone? First, we must believe and understand that we can improve, what we call a growth mindset. Second, we must want to improve at that particular skill. There has to be a purpose we care about, because it takes time and effort. Third, we must have an idea about how to improve, what we can do to improve. Not how I used to practice a guitar as a teenager, performing songs over and over again, but doing deliberate practice. And fourth, we must be in a low-stakes situation. Because if mistakes are to be expected, then the consequence of making them must not be catastrophic or even very significant. A tightrope walker doesn't practice new tricks without a net underneath, and an athlete wouldn't set out to first try a new move during a championship match. One reason that in our lives, we spend so much time in the performance zone is that our environments often are unnecessarily high stakes. We create social risks for one another, even in schools which are supposed to be all about learning, and I'm not talking about standardized tests. I mean that every minute of every day, many students in elementary schools through colleges feel that if they make a mistake, others will think less of them. No wonder they're always stressed out and not taking the risks necessary for learning. But they learn that mistakes are undesirable inadvertently when teachers or parents are eager to hear just correct answers and reject mistakes rather than welcome and examine them to learn from them, or when we look for narrow responses rather than encourage more exploratory thinking that we can all learn from, when all homework or student work has a number or a letter on it and counts toward a final grade, rather than being used for practice, mistakes, feedback and revision, we send the message that school is a performance zone. The same is true in our workplaces. In the companies I consult with, I often see flawless execution cultures, which leaders foster to encourage great work, but it leads employees to stay within what they know and not try new things, so companies struggle to innovate and improve, and they fall behind. Number four, why it's time to forget the pecking order at work by Margaret Hefferman. Margaret reinforces what highly successful companies already know, the need to focus on teams over superstars. All my life I've been told that the way we have to get ahead is to compete. Get into the right school, get into the right job, get to the top. And I've really never found it very inspiring. I've started and run businesses because invention is a joy. And because working alongside brilliant creative people is its own reward. And I've never really felt very motivated by pecking orders or by super chickens or by superstars. But for the past 50 years, we've run most organizations and some societies along the super chicken model. We've thought that success is achieved by picking the superstars, the brightest men or occasionally women in the room, and giving them all the resources and all the power. And the result has been just the same as in William Muir's experiment, aggression, dysfunction, and waste. If the only way the most productive can be successful is by suppressing the productivity of the rest, then we badly need to find a better way to work and a richer way to live. So what, what is it that makes some groups obviously more successful and more productive than others? Well, that's the question a team at MIT took to research, they brought in hundreds of volunteers, they put them into groups, and they gave them very hard problems to solve. And what happened was exactly what you'd expect, that some groups were very much more successful than others. But what was really interesting was that the high-achieving groups were not those where they had one or two people with spectacularly high IQ, nor were the most successful groups the ones that had the highest aggregate IQ. Instead, they had three characteristics, the really successful teams. First of all, they showed high degrees of social sensitivity to each other. This is measured by something called the reading the mind in the eye test. It's broadly considered a test for empathy. And the groups that scored highly on this did better. Secondly, the successful groups gave roughly equal time to each other so that no one voice dominated, but neither were there any passengers. And thirdly, the more successful groups had more women in them. <laughs> now, 
Was this because women typically score more highly on the reading of mind in the eye test, so you were getting a doubling down on the empathy quotient? Or was it because they brought a more diverse perspective? We don't really know. But the striking thing about this experiment is that it showed what we know, which is some groups do better than others. But what's key to that is their social connectedness to each other. Number five, great leadership comes down to only two rules by Peter Anderton. I truly feel Peter said it all in this video. Of course, there's more to learn, but this video is a must see for anyone in leadership. Rule number one of leadership is that it's not about you. Or to misquote Bill Clinton, it's about the people, stupid. Everything starts here. Eleanor Roosevelt put it like this. She said, a good leader can inspire people to have confidence in the leader. A great leader inspires people to have confidence in themselves. Why? Because they get rule number one. And a leader, of course, is only a leader when they've got followers. So the temptation is to create more followers who need you for the answers that you can actually then provide. But of course, the best leaders don't create more followers, they create more leaders. They recognise that the idea of the hero flying in to save the day, solving all of the problems, answering everything, just doesn't make sense. The world is too complex for any one of us to have all of the answers. And there I was, with our problem child. I was everywhere solving this problem, solving that problem, coming up with fabulous ideas, working all hours, convinced that I could sort it all out, and terrified that I would let the side down, terrified that I'd be some sort of failure. But I got it all wrong. Because at the end of the day, I didn't understand rule number one. So the whole situation was unravelling around my ears. Because right then I thought it was all about me. In my head, it was my blood, my sweat, my tears, and my ego. You see, whenever we find ourselves in a situation where we think everything is dependent upon us, when we think we're the only one who cares, we're the only one who gets it, whether it's in our home, whether it's in school, whether it's at work, whether it's in our community, the secret is to get back to rule number one. Robert Greenleaf in the 70s brought back the key to leadership with his model of servant leadership. He brought back rule number one loud and clear, but it was only part of the picture. The other key was still missing, and that key was rule number two. <coughs> so just before we come to rule number two, we're going to check in with authentic leadership. It's not the only leadership theory doing the rounds at the moment, but it's the one that brings us to rule number two. Because authentic leadership isn't about a great man. It's not about a fixed set of characteristics. It's about turning up at the top end of who we really are. It's less about trying to be somebody else, and it's more about trying to be ourselves brilliantly. Because any one of us can be a leader. It starts with having a clear understanding of who we are, of what we stand for, of what our strengths and weaknesses are, and then behaving in a transparent way that draws all of these things together. John Maxwell talks about five levels of leadership. He says people follow, first of all, because they have to. That's level one leadership. If you're the boss, they have to do as they're told. That's where in the biscuit factory you've got a queue of people waiting at five minutes before the end of the shift, all changed and ready to go just to slide their card through the oh. clock machine as they head out the door. They give you their minimum, never their best. Level two is where they follow you because of how they feel about you as an individual. Level three is where they follow you because of what you've achieved. Level four is where they follow you because of what you have done for them. And level five is where they follow you because of, what you, of who you are and what you represent. You see, each layer going deeper and deeper forms a deeper level of commitment. And as you move from each layer to the next, it's all about choice, but not your choice, their choice. That's leadership rule number one. So the change, apparently much misquoted, be the change that you want to see in the world, brings us face to face with rule number two, which is as simple and as powerful as rule number one. It's only about you. If ever you want to create change around you, it starts with who you are and how you behave. Each TED Talk video link is in the description. I highly recommend watching each in their entirety to get the full explanation and perspective. Yo, thanks for hanging out with me and consider subscribing for more leadership content.
So I'm sure, you know, in a nutshell, <coughs> excuse me, most of the things you've learned from us here, especially from Pastor Eforma on leadership days, you know, we are encapsulated in what you just heard in those video clips. And you even learned much more. You know? So today, we still have some few things to share with you. Hmm. <coughs> So, okay, everyone. Thank you for connecting. Ah, that was uh, those clips were loaded. Okay. Um, part of the things that were said in those clips is that a leader does not groom followers, and I've said it over and over on this platform. Leaders groom leaders, okay? And then Pastor O and I were just, uh, you know, thinking, processing a lot of things by the leading of the Spirit. And we just thought about it. That, ah, wouldn't it even be nice to discuss with family trends, you know, how they, as leaders, can leverage on their social media, you know, so that it's not that you just have an online presence. You must know that you can use your social media to build a community of loyal, engaged followers who are inspired and influenced by your authenticity. You see the same way that, okay, Pastor O and I, are the I'm looking for a better word to use. Um, Pastor O and I are the conveners of family trends. You see, family trends, family trends is not about me, family trends is not about Pastor O, family trends is about everyone who is not just a number but a member of this very unique community. So when I watch Comfort Bella take ownership and is in the comment section answering questions, I see Priscilla, I see Chinaza, I see Innocent, I see Ferdinand, I see Kingsley. I am so wowed because honestly, these are the people that know that this is home and they have pitched their tent here. These are people who know that they are not followers of family trends. They are leaders. They are leaders in family trends, which is the family. The umbrella of family trends is the family, a home away from home. Okay, so I am happy when I see everyone, you know, hold their side. There are sometimes Someone can ask a question. Before Pastor O and I would have even thought of what to respond to the person, Priscilla has responded. And you see, what makes us happy is that in her response, you see that she's, she's 10 steps ahead. You know, she has put together everything that she's learning on this platform and she's giving mind-blowing responses and we're just sitting down now you know we're just so wild we don't always tell them we don't always say it you know when we have to we do but we don't always say it but honestly each and every one of you make us proud okay yes so today we're thinking that we need to talk with you about how you can leverage your social media to connect to engage and to influence okay all these influencers, influencers you hear about, they started small. You know, scripture says we should not despise the days of small beginning. You too would one day become an influencer. You too would one day be seen as a top leader. You understand? Okay, so let us um, dive into it and then go through the chunks of what it takes to leverage 
your social media. All right. So when you come on social media, like I see some people on social media answering names that are not their names, you know, and so on and so forth. In my mind, I just say these people never start. <laughs> they don't even know what it takes. Because honestly, to be on social media, you must be an authentic person. You must be an authentic brand. By being a brand, you are what you say you are. No fake name, no fake identity, you know. When you stand in or sit in front of people, when you're before people, you know, you share your personal stories, you share your values, you share your experiences, and they are relatable. You did not fall from space. People understand that you had a genesis and that you're heading towards your revelation. And they can connect with you, you know. They realize that you're a human being. You're human and you're humane and you're approachable, okay? So building your brand is very important. Now, when you're on social media, you know, there were days when everything was, people wanted this perfection, you know? Everybody wanted to be seen like they don't know where the restroom is. You understand? But not these days. These days, you post about your journey. You post about your challenges. You post about your key moments. You know, everything that has shaped your leadership style. You talk about it. All these things build you. All these things project your authenticity. You know, it could be a lesson that you have learned. It could be a career setback. It could be anything including the values that you uphold in your decision-making. Now, what this does is that it makes everyone and anyone that comes to your page have emotional connection with you. People can then be loyal. They cannot be loyal with someone who is answering <laughs> I was almost tempted to give an example, but uh, she's right here and she said, hey, money has come to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Mm. You shouldn't be answering a name. And when it's time for you to identify yourself, what your ID carries is different. different. It's not nice. You see, how can people be loyal? How can people trust you? How can people believe in you? How can you set a pace and and be a role model for others to follow, okay? You know, a, 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 a typical example, mm -hmm. you know, just comes to mind. Yeah. Thinking about um, the comedian Basket Mouth, mm -hmm. you know, when you call Basket Mouth, people will ordinarily know who you are talking about. Yes. But personally, I can't even remember his name. Bright Okocha. Bright Okocha. Mm -hmm. Now, when you mention Bright Okocha, many will ask, who is that? Mm -hmm. Same as Brain Jota. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a name known outside the shores of his country or even the continent. But by the time people mention his real name, as mean you pick his passport and you are now looking at the name, clearly I'm not sure it's brain that will be there. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can now begin to see in some countries they take issue of dual identity seriously. So what we are saying here is that, you know, as you are beginning, just make sure you are authentic, make sure you are original, make sure you are, you are, you are yourself. Okay, yes, get that name that you are. Mm. And mm -hmm. for, for those ones, I actually believe that it's because they decided to build their brand around those names. Yes, sometimes we understand, but not when somebody is um um uh let me just even say Elizabeth Yusuf. Your name is Elizabeth Yusuf. And on social media, you are Deborah Lawa. <laughs> I don't get it. I, I can't reconcile with it. So uh, it's very important. If you know that you're going to have to build your brand, you have to start by being original. You have to start by being germane. You have to start by being genuine. Okay? Um, as a leader, because remember, all of you are leaders. I'm talking to you as leaders. As a leader, 
you don't work towards perfection. There's no point. There's no point. You don't work towards perfection. There's no need. Who are you impressing? It's better to just be in your skin, be yourself. When people see you and they see your vulnerability and your growth, they feel connected. It actually inspires trust. Like somebody is looking at me now. Yes, I've seen a lot of comments. Oh, <laughs> Pastor Ifama, you're looking very fine today. Pastor Ifama, you people should just cook, cook, come out and tell me, Pastor Ifama, you have not done your hair. Okay. And I will do it. Don't worry. Because I also <laughs> know that there are moments that you have not found time to do your hair. That is why I have people gone to go and look for this, my band, and tied my hair. They didn't judge me, mm -hmm. you know. Because most times, I just, I'm a very natural person. Mm -hmm. I'm actually very natural. I don't have to fend ears or anything. There's no point. So yes, when I have time to go and do my hair, I'll go and do it. Because I know that it's not every time that somebody has time. You hear? <laughs> okay, so if that's your passive comment, you're looking fine today, you're looking fine today. If it's actually a genuine comment, thank you. Thank you, I accept it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> as a leader on your social media platforms, you have to use a consistent tone and style across all platforms. Let me give an example. Oh, let's say somebody is a Christian. And most things you post are Christian stuff. Or let's say you post family content. You know, one day if somebody comes across your content and is reggae or blues, they can't reconcile it. Because they are wondering, where is this coming from? Okay, So your tone must be consistent and your style must be consistent too. Let me tell you what consistency does. Consistency is key to recognition and brand reinforcement. What is consistency? That thing you do over and over at all times, you know, all the time. That is what, what you're known with. Mm -hmm. You understand? Okay. So it helps you to maintain a cohesive voice. And that voice helps people in identifying you. I'm just giving, let me just even give an example. It's like family trends sound, even in your sleep. Once you hear that sound, innocent, you know it's family trends. Yes. Shinaza, you know it's family trends. And you people know what number two does to you. Remember. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the number two song. The number two. Okay. <laughs> So once you hear that number mm -hmm. two now, all the plants will start coming up and everything. You know, it's consistent. It's what makes us family members, all right? Okay, so the same thing with your message. Your message must align with your person and your organization and your values across all platforms. You know, you cannot be a choir girl in the daytime and a runs girl in the nighttime. <laughs> and you expect that it's okay. Somebody can see you in the night and scream. Is it not so, 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 and so, best? Why? Because according to Pastor O, inconsistency has entered the consistency. <laughs> they are made Priscilla. Extract a promise from me. Priscilla, I have kept my promise. I've done the needful. I'll soon post the video, okay? Mm. Mm. So mm. let there not be inconsistency in the consistency. consistency. All right? If you want to have unique tone, a unique tone, and maintain it, you can use a content calendar for what it is that you put out on social media. You can use a content calendar. So when you go through your content calendar, you see that everything is in sync. There's nothing sticking out. There's nothing out of place. So a content calendar helps you. Now, consistency builds credibility. Whether you feel like it or whether you don't feel like it, show up. Show up. That thing you have to do, do it. And then try as much as possible to provide dependable insights. In other words, give value. Give value so that people will always want to listen to you. People would always want to watch you. Sometimes value is just that you make people smile. 
you take away stress from them, you take away tension from them. That is great value, especially in these days of blue and baloo. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you see, you must you must find ways to <clears throat> add value, you must find ways to be consistent. And let me tell you, when you add value, when people have reasons to convince themselves that they gain dependable insight from you, it increases <laughs> engagement. And it also increases your recognition as a thought leader. People know that, okay, if it is cooking, you're good in that. If it is dancing, you're good in that. That one, I'm not, nobody should come and tell me anything. That dance that was posted today, I almost told them to write there that <laughs> nobody must say thing. <laughs> I did not want to hear film. Mm -hmm. And you people have gone and be saying film, 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 film. film. I heard somebody <laughs> say, hey, Pastor, oh, dance better than you. I'm going to send a response there. Oh, yeah, dance your own. <laughs> dance your own and pose. Let me see. Because me, I've never prided myself in knowing how to dance. You mm -hmm. know my vulnerability. Mm -hmm. I cannot dance to save anybody. Okay. <laughs> it's only when Pastor O oh, will have disturbed me, disturbed me, disturbed me, then I'll just go and move my body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> maybe if any of you has time, you teach me dance. Mm -hmm. All right. So I don't know if Pastor O has anything to say before I continue. Well, not really. Just that was someone made a comment. Here's a man, Gloria. She said, Chimo, mommy, why do you mention choir? Why not another thing? Hey, well, when are you I'm choir? watching you now with one eye for mentioning choir. Oh, you know that I don't know mm. that you're in choir. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so it is well, though. You mm. can forgive me. I don't know that you're in choir. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, she should sing for us. In fact, but now that you're in choir, we need to discuss soon. Uh, so that you can create some singing content, okay? <laughs> All right. Mm, okay. Ah, okay. Okay, Julia says some persons can never be consistent. They are always having, uh, okay, talking about age, birthday, career, name, and all yeah. that. Okay, go ahead. Okay, and Warisco said the two of you did well. Warisco, thank you. Thank you for the encouragement. Mm -hmm. eh? I'm, I'm deeply encouraged. Eminent. I wonder why you are <laughs> laughing because with that kind of Because there's one area where I don't even know is that. <laughs> I mean, I know myself. No, there's also another one. Which one? Water. Oh, no, no, no. But that one is different. I told them the story now. Okay. The day that we're talking about <laughs> Suki Tops and the, the gossip and everything, that book that I wrote, <laughs> I share that it's part of vulnerability. Me, I don't hide my own. Mm. Just like I told you people that I was going to share a story with you, Shelly, I shared it. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor O even joined me to share. You see, mm -hmm. when it comes to transparency and vulnerability, just count me, count me tops. Abigail, show us. No, Uzoma is telling Abigail to show, show us. us her dancing steps. In fact, eh, <laughs> it would even be very interesting. Let me suggest something. That they should eat Tomorrow, person. can everybody just dance, post on their page, and tag family friends? <laughs> then we will repost the, the, the three that are most interesting. Yeah, don't dance. You can dance to the family trend song. You can dance to family trend song. <laughs> dance to family trend song, post on your page, tag, tag us, family and then we'll look out for the three very lovely dances, mm -hmm. and we'll post them on family trends. That's nice, yeah. That's nice. It just, it just came me, to me I'm, now. I'm, I'm going to look out for all of their steps. Yes. Juliet, Innocent, Confabella, Kingsley, um, Uzoma. <laughs> all Juliet, of them. Well, Juliet, dance, <laughs> dance. Post, post on your family trend sound. You know, if post any on, of you want the sound, we'll send it to the post WhatsApp Post it on page. your own page, then just tag all okay. Yeah. Yes, so oh, you send the sound to WhatsApp page. Okay. So you can use the sound, dance, post on mm -hmm. your page, tag us. We'll just look at, hmm, okay, this one is mm, just there. 
this one is really nice. Anyone that is really nice will Warisco, it's not issue of mouth. Oh. You will dance and pose. Warisco, you will yes, dance. Yes, I will dance. So, uh, dance the person that I know no, it's not that dances very well, very well is innocent. Innocent, yes. Innocent dances very well. Let's, <laughs> let's give innocent his flowers. Yes. He dances well. So let's see if Warisco can um, take it from innocent. <laughs> Warisco, let's see if you can take it from innocent, yes. Uzoma say family trend dance qua. You know yes. they run. <laughs> Uzoma, have you not heard it? Mm -hmm. All those are our video, the background music. All that's the, the background trend music song. in our videos, no? It's family trend sound and it's very dancing. And Uzoma said that um, she's not on the WhatsApp page. Okay. Uh, what uh, are you waiting for? Join. Innocent, please give it to Sandy. Who's the, uh, it's Priscilla. Okay. Priscilla, okay. Priscilla, please get in touch with Uzoma and add him to the group. Send him the link. Okay. Any mm. other thing? <laughs> Choma, Choma say, okay. We are our dancers, so it don't be. It Choma, don't you're not there among the dancers. <laughs> Choma and Debbie, I'm waiting for your Choma, dance. Choma, you must dance. So. We ah. are waiting for your dance. <laughs> hey. Comfort, you dance well too. Yes, yes. Comfort, Comfort you well. innocent, you dance well. Uh, who else? Julia says she dance uh, social media. <laughs> Can you, Julia? This you don't Juliet, understand this, this Julia. There's mm. someone that we've not been seeing for a while. Has anyone checked on Faith? Okay. We haven't yeah. seen Faith for a while. Mm. Juliet is making us remember Faith because <laughs> these comments, they sound like waiting yeah, Faith, Faith to write. Uh, mm? Faith. Faith was the one that said that. Was it Faith or Julia that said we well, deserve both? Faith. Faith. It was Faith. <laughs> Somebody needs to check on faith, please. Eh? Mm. Thank you in advance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so should we start? Oh, yes, go ahead. Okay, so we're even talking about transparency and vulnerability. And that was the next thing I was going to talk about. As a leader, there should not be anything for you to hide. Just be transparent, just be vulnerable. You don't have to, you're not, you're not, you're not better than anybody. Let's put it that way. So you don't have to feign superiority. Just be yourself. If you get it right, you say so. If you make mistakes, you apologize. You admit your mistake. Apologize and try to make things right. Okay? Um, then while we're still talking on how you can leverage social media, because, you know, some people will come out to social media and be claiming right, proving what I don't know. If you did, example now, Shebi, I said choir. Somebody took me up on it. Juliet, have you, was it Juliet? Someone took it. Uh, you did not see her. I just quickly apologized. But I don't even know she she did choir. Mm -hmm. But, well, my intentions are right. My intentions are pure because it was just an example. Mm. All right. Okay, so when you're transparent, when you're vulnerable, you foster deep connections. You know, leaders who can share their failures, struggles, and lessons Connect more. Mm -hmm. You see, people make this mistake of thinking that when you come out and you show perfection all the time, that that is when people like you. No. no. People can connect with you. It resonates with people when they know that, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, Pastor Informa, they chop soup when meat, no day inside you. Aha. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So she's like every other person. Oh, so Pastor Informa drinks Gary and Granot. Okay. So you are better able to connect, okay? All right. Then practical steps, things you can do on your social media. You can post any post, your pictures, messages, prayers, anything. You can do live, you can go live. You can do question and answer session. You can post a blog or an article. You can post stories. Or you can even come live and talk about stories. You can talk about your failures. You can talk about your moments of doubt. Why we are discussing this is that all of you are on social media. All of you are listening to me. But to be honest, I don't know what all of you are doing with your own social media platforms. And it's our desire and our um, intention to get you to use your platforms better. 
We want you to also engage with your own followers. We want you to also connect with your own followers. We want you to be able to have influence on your own followers. So what you learn from us, we want you to replicate. Do you understand? We're teaching you these things. We're not selfish about them. We want you to know because we want your growth. Yes, we your want your growth success. and your success are extremely important to yeah. us. Okay. So on social media, try and be honest about your imperfections. Try and be honest about it's not even every day that you'll come live and you have makeup on. Sometimes you use your normal face, let them see how your face is normal. It's okay. <laughs> It's really okay. And you'll be appreciated. It shows that you are real. And then, when you are real, what do you do? You give others a platform to also be real. When you share your stories, what are you doing? You're giving others a platform to also share their stories. So remember our topic today, how leaders can leverage social media platforms to connect engage and influence it's a total package the whole nine years okay so on social media try and engage in conversations whether you are on live or whether it is that somebody drops comments on your page try and respond reply to comments answer questions if you even need to ask questions, what you don't understand, ask. Mm -hmm. Participate in discussions. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it means when you participate in discussions, when you engage in conversations? What you are saying is that you are interested in human beings. You are interested in people. You are interested in your community. And people love it when they know that you are interested in them. Yes. I remember one of you telling me some days ago that he just sneaks in and sneaks out, not knowing that everybody, anybody even notices him, mm -hmm. and not knowing that anybody cares. And he was shocked that me, Ifama, that I picked my phone and called him. And interestingly, I picked my phone and called him by the leading of the spirit. Mm -hmm. It was very important, and I had to. And there he was, oh, this family trends that he just sneaks into. He doesn't <laughs> even know that anybody notices him. Well, we notice, we everybody, notice everybody because <laughs> we care. Exactly. We care, so we notice mm -hmm. everybody. All right? Okay. So on... Your social media platforms. You can come to your social media, go live and tell stories. You can write <laughs> stories and you can post it. Do you know that it may be something that happened to you, an experience you had, and you'll be very shocked and surprised how many people have gone through that. Yes. Or you'll even be very surprised as, as to who you will minister to with that encounter. Because that your story may just help someone. It may just help someone. Who is in that situation. Mm -hmm. you know, way out of that situation. Yes. Imagine one day. We were actually in the kitchen about to cook. And I just said to Pastor, oh, ah, ah, this is a new recipe. Why don't you just even go live and teach people? And that day, I was so wowed at the comments and the appreciation. Mm -hmm. Comfort Bella was there. You know, Juliet was there. Faith was there. And they were so happy. Innocence was there. Ferdinand was there. And they were so happy. Chinaza yeah. was there too. Happy girl, Chinaza. Happy girl. They learned <laughs> something new. Just by me deciding to go live and teach it, you can also do the same for your community. There's so much that God has deposited on the inside of you. You have a lot. You have a lot to let out. You have a lot to teach people. You have, even if you are a recharge card seller, what do they even call them now? Um, data, vendor. data vendor. You can also teach others how you became a data vendor. Because there are so many people that are looking for what to do. You can teach them how to source for, for the cards and all that. You can teach them. 
Let's say you're a designer like Priscilla and Waristo. Waristo and Priscilla. I'm being particular now. It's part of my engagement tactics. Waristo and Priscilla, have you ever thought of coming live on your platforms to teach people how to cut plots? You will be surprised at how many lives you will impact. Mm -hmm. Even if you decide to train people that they should pay for it, you'll also be surprised at how many people will enroll just to learn how to hold scissors. Beginner's course. Yes. You can teach it. We're saying all of these things because a lot of people just think that being on social media is just to be liking and commenting. Being on social media is just to wait for uh, who wants to give GB. Who wants to give them GB? You know, and so on and so forth. Beyond being on social media, once in a while you get GB. You can use your platforms for mind-blowing things. Okay? So like on Instagram and TikTok, Instagram and TikTok are different platforms. You know, you, there are different ways of communicating on Instagram and TikTok. They are more visual than Facebook, okay? So whatever complex ideas you want to communicate there, you have to break them down into digestible and relatable content in a digestible and relatable manner, okay? Um, there are things you can post on social media that I thought of recently and I am going to start posting to. I want to mention them to you because you may even start before me. All right. You know, when you are practicing something, maybe you are practicing a dance or you're practicing how to talk in a video or something, you have the down times, you have the fall times, you have the mistakes. All of those things, all those mistakes you make when you're recording or practicing how to dance, they are called behind the yes. scenes. Those behind the scenes moments, you can share them and your followers would love them. Okay? So you can share behind the scenes. You can share team moments. Okay, you have a team of staff. Maybe where you people are eating together or where you people are gisting together or where you people are arguing together. It's called team moments. You can record and share. You can also talk about a day in the life of so, 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 and so. A day in the life of a trader. A day in the life of a fish distributor. A day in the life of a content creator. You know, you can do all of those things and you can share them. Just know that consistency in value, that is project your brand. All right? Always try and make sure that there's coherence between your leadership and your culture, whether the culture is personal or organizational. I have a lot to download on this topic. I want to take you all, Pastor O and I want to take you all through the process, the whole process of social media content creation, what to do, how to do it, and so on and so forth. So you're going to have to look forward to next Monday because next Monday we're now going to talk about the different formats of content, all right? I looked now and saw that <laughs> time was time up. Was, time was fast already spent. up, fast spent, and we had so much for today. So we'll just leave the so much for another Monday. But meanwhile, we have some news. And the news is, when we started Family Trends, we decided to experiment on a lot of things to know what will work, what will not work, what we need to improve upon, what, you know, and so on and so forth. So we started the daily life. We have actually come to a point where we have decided that there is no need to continue everyday life. We have come to a point where we have decided that rather than go live six days a week in the evening by 9 p.m., we will be going live just three days in the evening by 9 p.m. 
So, you know, before we used to go live Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday. every 9 p.m. You will not be seeing us every 9 p.m. again. Rather, you will see us 9 p.m. on Mondays. On Mondays, on Wednesdays, on Wednesdays, and Fridays, and on Fridays. However, for Mondays, you know, we now have for Mondays, we have leadership and wealth creation matched together. Right together on Monday. Then for Wednesday, you will have wellness, storytelling, or and trending, discussion and discussion, trending issues. Trending issue for Wednesday. And for Friday, we will now have relationship, relationship bonding, networking, and networking. Yes. So okay, so still the same nine years. It's still the <laughs> same nine years. <laughs> the difference is that if we come live on Monday and there is need for whatever we want to download to take a little extra time than one hour, maybe one hour 30 minutes, fine. fine. So you will understand that you're getting two days value. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we come live on Wednesday. And there's also a need for us to extend the bit. Fine. And the same thing on Friday. Friday. Just be sure that what we are doing and this decision that we have taken was done with you in mind. Yes. One, we want you to plan your time better. Two, we want you to gain maximum value, value. every time we come live. And then three, we don't want you to have wear and tear, okay? So at least every other day is better than every day, okay? However, for the morning devotion, it's still morning Monday Morning devotion to is Friday. still Monday to Friday. <coughs> Mon morning devotion, 6 a.m. prayer, is still Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But evening life, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And okay, fine. We have taken this decision. We have communicated it to you, but please, it's very important that we get your buy-in. So in the comment section, tell us how you feel about it. Do you think it's a wow idea? It's a wow decision? Or you want to make input? There are things you want to add. There are things you want to tweak. Or you think, okay, instead of Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, it should be Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Let's have it Let's in the have comments. It. Yes, just feel free because to share. Because we're here your, because of you. Feel free to share your thoughts. Yes, thoughts. and your thoughts matter a lot. Okay? Your mm -hmm. thoughts matter a lot. All right, so that's it for that. Then remember that we have Ifama Chibogu page. Okay? So we'll find time sometime to go live on Ifama Chibogu page and then also share with you the programs that will be running on that page that, yes. okay we're still fine-tuning it that's why we haven't come up with an announcement yet any comments any feedback before we go okay none really so Chum, i see your comment thank you very much thank you for the encouragement and comfort thank you too so please, anything comments. you want to say to us, let's read them in the comments and we're going to respond. We have fully loaded information about social media. Make sure you don't miss next week, Monday's training, okay? <laughs> All right. All right. So see you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.